Paul Soka, Ivy Masters Learning Center, and IvyMasters.com. And today we're going to look at Test 8, Section 3, Number 7, which reads, What's the solution set to the equation above? I'm about to tell you some things that are going to save you a lot of time with these square root problems. One thing is, when you're using square roots, always use your answer choices. We're going to see how long it would take to solve algebraically, and that you'd probably get the wrong answer. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that the square root of 9 is positive 3 only. Now if you have x squared equals 9, then that answer is plus or minus 3. But this does not apply to this question, which we're going to get to. Another thing you want to eliminate imperfect squares. So if you put something in the square root, it's not a perfect square, that's going to be gone as well. And you also, once you have the square root isolated, you could eliminate any negatives outside the square root because the square root of something is always going to be positive. Keep in mind, if we look at answer choice C, that's not an x comma y, negative 1 comma 5. Those are different values of x. And then, of course, remember PEMDAS. Those are seven things for you to remember. Now, let me break it down how I would approach this question if I were doing it. First off, I would look at it and say, hey, there's more than one answer choice for C and D. I'd eliminate them right away. I literally went through every single question released by every SAT, and I've never seen a question. Now, in math, it is a thing. You could get more than one answer in a square root problem, but I've never seen it for SAT, probably because they want to get the kid who is great at algebra, but forgets to check for extraneous solutions, which we're about to get to. So if I was approaching this question, I would do that first. Then I would subtract the four from both sides. And then what we find is we've got the square root of 2x plus 6. The 4s would cancel, and you get equals x minus 1. And notice if I plug negative 1 in for the x, I get a negative 2 on the right side of the equation. So a is gone. The correct answer has got to be 5. And I didn't really even do much. So why do I want to do it that way? Because if I were to solve this algebraically, students solve this algebraic would go like this, square that side, square that side. This would get rid of the square root. 2x plus 6 you get on the left. On the right, what do you do? It's x minus 1 quantity squared. You do not distribute the, the exponents. It's x minus 1 times x minus 1. And then what is it? 2x plus 6 equals x squared minus x minus x plus 1. And then you've got 2x plus 6 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then you subtract your 2x from both sides. These cancel, you get 6 equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. And then you subtract your 6 from both sides because quadratic should always be set equal to 0. You get x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And then you factor it, and we need two things that are going to multiply to give you a negative 5 and add to give you a negative 4. Well, if we factor that negative 5, the negative's got to be bigger. So you could do 1 and negative 5, and that's going to work. And so we've got an x here, we've got an x here. Your signs are plus minus. And again, it's negative 5, it's positive 1. Now what you got to do is you set x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, and then subtract 1 from both sides. This cancels x equals negative 1. And then add 5 to both sides. This cancels, you get x equals 5. And then you choose answer choice C and you're wrong. Why are you wrong? Because you forgot to check for extraneous solutions. So this is a giant waste of time. And even after you waste all that time, you could forget to plug back in for extraneous solutions. You've got to plug these in anyway. So you might as well plug them in right off the bat from the answer choices. And if you notice, if I plug negative one in here, I've got the square root of two times negative one plus six plus 4 equals negative 1 plus 3. And <clears throat> inside the root, you wind up getting the square root of 4 plus 4, which would be 2 plus 4, which would be 6 on that side. And you get that it equals 2, which just is not right. So just plug your answer choices in right away. So what we've got here is you want to use your answer choices. Um, keep in mind that there's never going to be, after you isolate that radical, that square root, there's never going to be a negative on the right side of the equal sign. Um, if you did get any imperfect squares, we would eliminate it. That, maybe that doesn't apply to this one so much, we didn't really check. Um, so eliminate those negatives outside the root. 
Keep in mind it's not an XY. They're different values for X. And follow PEMDAS, don't forget that. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You can share it with someone who has trouble with square root problems. If there's any question you'd like to see answered from any official PSAT or SAT or ACT, leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to shoot a video on it. Click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Check out our short video on TikTok. Have a great day.